Well, Gary, my husband and I have a dairy farm in northeastern Pennsylvania up by Dimmick. I'm sure you've heard of it. Mm -hmm. And we have several wells on our property at this point in time. I want to know, why should I believe your opinion of this frack water stuff? Well, I've had a lot of experience in uh, both uh, oil and gas and also the environmental industry. Grew up in a, uh, an oil field town when it was really polluted. And uh, went back east and got a master's degree in environmental geology and had the opportunity to work in the field and then go back at a later date and work uh, with the environmental companies. And in the process of all these years of working with the oil and gas, we started fracking wells back in the 1970s. And now I, with a hydrology background too, I'm able to really understand the total picture. And that's the problem in most of these uh, things that we're looking at here is people don't understand the total problem. We have researchers working only at the shallow depths for hydrology, and then you have oil and gas people working at greater depths. We need them both. Um, I see that you've helped shape some positive relationships between the community and the gas and oil industry. Yes, we, uh, we formed, before the uh, shell play started, we formed a committee of uh, multiple parishes here and started working at our water resources, put in some monitoring wells, and when the, parish, when the play started, we were able to uh, actually talk to the companies and explain to them that we thought we had a problem with the groundwater. And they voluntarily started coming off the groundwater and started using the more prolific surface water. I see. Now you've served on several national hydrofracking workshops? That's correct. Um, what about those? In both cases, uh, they were both pleasant to be there because we, we really saw problems across these barriers with the technical people from the water companies as well as the oil and gas companies and the EPA. I wish the public could have seen the way all these, these workshops came down. And the EPA, I believe now, understands a lot more about fracking and how it's literally impossible to frack up into a groundwater zone. Now, tell me about the Duke University study. Wait a minute, um, let's back up a little. Can you expound on that a little bit? Sure. Uh, the U.S. Department of Energy did studies back in the 1980s out west where they drill wells down vertically, horizontally, frack them with dye, and then they mine back into those wells to determine how fracking occurs. And one of the most important things they determined was that as you get shallower and shallower, the fracking starts dying out. At great depths, the frack goes vertically and horizontally, but as you come shallower and shallower, it uh, eventually goes away. In fact, there's 10,000 wells that have been what we call frack mapped using microseismic and it shows that literally you just you're not going to get into the groundwater. Incredible. Um, so basically the the big fears that we have up in our Dimmick area are unfounded. The from study to study various things are going on as far as the Marcellus uh, I've seen no cases where the Marcellus gas has got into any aquifers. And as far as the Duke University study goes? A little disappointed there. Um, I've worked with stable isotopes, and one of the problems I saw immediately was there was a small sample size over a large area. Uh, they didn't reveal all the data. There was no background data. Uh, there's nothing before and after. And um, e any oil and gas person knows that when you're, you're looking for oil and gas, you're gonna find signs of that near the surface over 300 million years, it's going to migrate. All traps leak. Now you're talking about methane gas. Methane gas, yes. Okay. And, and even the methane generated for oil and gas was found throughout the whole study area, even where there was no drilling going on. Really? Mm -hmm. The thermogenic methane was found in those areas that hadn't even been drilled yet. Yeah. So it's not because of fracking? Well, they put that in the title, and when you look at the fracking, why should it be in the title? Because what they said in the study was that they had no indications that uh, fracking had anything to do with this. I, I think it's a combination of the press and also uh, the group that did the study. Uh, they could have done a lot better job. Okay, if you could condense all this thing, all our little conversation into three simple points, what would they be? Well, number one, it's, it's rare to get uh, true thermogenic gas into a, an aquifer. And by thermogenic you mean? Oil and gas derived uh, uh, the versus methane. coal, coal methane. Okay. And it's very common for coal methane to be in our, our aquifers, even here. We have uh, wells that will, will be set on fire 
It's coming from the cold and the aquifer itself. It's not coming from down deep. We have a lot younger rocks here, though. Up in Marcellus, at 300 million years, you're probably going to see a mixture of all of these gases just because of the length of time it's been there. Again, all traps leak. All oil and gas traps leak. So I would expect, in that case, to have, have a, a gas available in the water wells, too. Um, there's probably too much emphasis going on, there is too much emphasis going on on the fracking. The fracking mechanism just doesn't allow it to come up shallow. Okay. And three, if you're going to have problems, it's probably going to be a pipe leak or something like that or a spill at the surface. And that's why we need to keep pushing the oil and gas companies to use their best management practices. Which in your opinion? They're doing a good job. They're doing a good job. Very good. When you compare the oil and gas industry and, and potential environmental problems, I worked at Savannah River site, uh, a nuclear site. That is really a bad place to be. I grew up in an oil and gas field when there were practically no regulations. That was not a good place to be. But it's amazing how well they've improved all of the rules and regulations and the companies themselves internally have policies now that really uh, make, them, make it very well for the, for the public, very good for the public. And they want the good relations. Yeah, they don't want to lose anything. There's, they don't gain anything by losing something out of a pipe. That loses profits. Uh, it, it's just not the thing that they would want to do anyway. So they don't want to have problems like that. And they work hard at it. My biggest disappointment in Gasland was that a, basically a guy that doesn't understand the industry at all goes and tells a story. And it truly is a story. A lot of it is fiction. And I can see people falling into it. But as an expert in the hydrology near the surface, and deep oil and gas, I have a difficult time going through the whole movie. It really disturbs me, the, the things that he, he misrepresents. So this misrepresentation is terrible. That's what we don't need. We need the facts.